That is a northern water snake, and this is a copperhead. As you can tell, these two snakes are really similar, but in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can identify the differences between these two snakes. The northern water snake, or sometimes commonly known as the midland water snake, sometimes even the common water snake. But heck, whatever you call it, where I live in Midlothian, Virginia, we call it the northern water snake. Let's jump right in. A key way to identify a water snake from a copperhead is by looking at its eyes. Not particularly their pupils, but where the eyes are placed on the snake's head. For example, a water snake will have its eyes being closer to the top of their head because when they are swimming in the water, they can only have their head submerged out of the water and they can still see what's going on around them. If you manage to get a good look at the snake's face, there is another way to identify copperheads from water snakes. You should be looking for these holes in the snake's face right here. These holes are known as heat sensing pits. And coincidentally, the name pits is short for pit viper. And pit viper is a family of snake that the copperhead is a part of. A water snake will not have these pits in the front of their faces due to them not being heat seekers. One final good method to tell apart a water snake from different species of snakes is by looking at the bands. But for this part, I'll let past me do the talking. Take it away, me. These very noticeable vertical bands running down their body. See that? See how the bands run vertical and there's a lot of them? With copperheads, they'll oftentimes be less bands and they'll be in what I call the Hershey, the Hershey kiss shape. Moving right along to the copperhead, aka a Keisterdon contortrix contortrix. And one of the biggest methods I use to identify copperheads is by using the Hershey's kiss method. Simply all you have to do is look at the side of the snake's body and if you see a Hershey kiss shape running down the side, then congratulations, you're dealing with a copperhead. When it comes to baby snakes, there's no twist with this one. Well, when water snakes are born, they're going to be way more streamlined and thinner. Meanwhile, copperheads and cottonmouths, or aka water moccasins, which we'll get into later, are way more heavy, thicker bodied animals. And even at birth, the Hershey's Kiss method will still work on the baby copperheads due to them being exact replicas of their adults. Also, one final way to tell if you're dealing with a baby water snake or copperhead or water moccasin is by looking at the tails. If you see a highlighter tip at the end of their tails, then you are dealing with either a copperhead or a water moccasin. But that will depend on where you live in the state. A common myth people would tell you is look at the snake's head shape to identify whether it's venomous or not. But, as we can see in this example, this is a harmless water snake flattening out his head, or as I call it, puffing out his cheeks to make himself look like a venomous snake. But remember, Look at the eye placement. Look how they're placed so close to the top of the head. Look at the amount of bands as well. You can see a lot of bands and how they're not separated into that Hershey kiss shape. And there's no Hershey kisses in sight, so you are dealing with a harmless water snake. For some of you guys, copperheads are not the only venomous snakes you guys have to watch out for. Another common snake is called the water moccasin or cottonmouth. But if you live here in Midlothian, Virginia, then you have absolutely nothing to fear because they are not around our area. But I will show you how to identify them from water snakes. The concepts are going to be the same with just a few minor changes. A key way to identify a water moccasin from a water snake is by looking at the water moccasin's face. If you see a stripe or what I call a racing stripe running down the side of the snake's face, then you are dealing with a water moccasin because a water snake does not have this particular marking. Also, if you manage to get a look at the back of the snake's head, look where the eyes would be. If you see a scale covering the eyes, that would be a key indicator that you are probably dealing with a water moccasin. Because remember, the eyes on the water snake are placed usually near the top of their head, and they're pretty visible. But if you see a scale covering the eye slot, then you are probably dealing with a water moccasin. One final way I look at the difference between water moccasins and water snakes is look at the thickness of the snake. Usually, water snakes tend to be longer and cottonmouths tend to be thicker. Not saying it could be vice versa, but 90% of the time, cottonmouths are gonna be way just thicker and heavy-bodied snakes as opposed to water snakes, which are more streamlined, but they can get longer. 
And there you have it. That's how you identify a water snake, a water moccasin, or cottonmouth, and a copperhead. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Let me know if you learned something. And subscribe if you're new. See you on the next one.